Não, não é bom. Não, não é bom. Não é salário. Como, como é que como é que ganha? É, assim, uma linha está 25 mil reais. 30 cents for each plank they cut. At the end of the day, they will have made two euros and their backs will be extremely sore. In this region of Mozambique, technology has not yet replaced manual labor. To that end, a spare machine part effectively costs more than a human life. This team of lumberjacks are making the most of a rare break as the vehicle taking them to the forest is experiencing some trouble. The engine is overheating. They need to let the monster cool down, but Basunga, the head of the team, does not want to lose an entire day's work. Unfortunately, the truck is a real pressure cooker. The hot water geezer did not injure anyone, but there is a small problem. Without the cap, they cannot leave. Finally, half an hour later, the Sunga's team can see that it's going to be a long day. Work is scarce in Mozambique. Getting enough to eat every day is not easy. So when a job presents itself, no one ever refuses it, even if it is illegal. Like these lumberjacks, or rather these forest thieves. Even though it's forbidden, they cut down approximately 20 trees a day, hoping not to be caught by the police. They go further and further where the road no longer exists taking no notice of the danger. This extensive plunder is transforming their country into a desolate wasteland. Every year, 22,000 square kilometers of woodland disappears. That is an amount 20 times the size of Paris. Pink ivory, ebony, these names are the stuff of dreams. However, these precious trees are on the brink of extinction. Every year, thousands of tree trunks are shipped off to Asian countries. Transport is challenging. The road is like a long obstacle course. Driving in Mozambique requires a lot of patience. The roads in Mozambique have been left to waste away. Even though the country is rich in gas and coal, it's still struggling to overcome the aftermath of the terrible civil war that knocked it to the ground between 1977 and 1992. Almost four decades later, earning a dollar a day is a real challenge. Resourcefulness and recycling are key to getting by. Knowing how to use one's hands and being able to work in a team are essential. 
Those who do not follow get left behind. Nobody messes around when earning a living is at stake. Half of Mozambique's 25 million inhabitants live below the poverty line, and yet they keep on smiling. Their motto is, life is stronger than anything. One of the best paid jobs in Mozambique is working as a woodcutter. Lumberjacks earn three euros a day for taking on a constant stream of obstacles. Today's first challenge is dodging these branches before they knock the men out. Brave and very patient, this route is anything but a smooth ride. Before getting the truck out of the hole, the lumberjacks go for the tree. The villagers watch silently. They know nothing will stop these men who work to put food on the table. After the morning breakdown, Basunga and his men are delayed by two hours. Their boss is worried. Boss. Ah, boss. I the city. Fast is best, as the police always do their rounds at the end of the day. By this time, the team should be leaving with a truck full of tree trunks. If they're caught, both the truck and their axes are confiscated, unless they have enough money to get out of it. <laughs> The track ends at this point. The team cut their last set of trees here last week. Now they have to venture into the unknown. Basunga has never gone this far before. Before plundering the forest, they must face a final obstacle, the dried riverbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Digging would take hours, so Basunga tries his luck with the jack. At first, his efforts seem in vain. The men may have to spend the night in the bush without earning any money. They're paid by the number of trees cut down. Their tempers start to flare up. The team prepare to return empty-handed. It's only four hours before nightfall. Four hundred kilometers further north, it's rained all morning and the ground has become muddy. When the road gets muddy, business always suffers. At a road stop in Balama, Johnny, the bush taxi driver, desperately waits for customers. No one wants to run the risk of winding up stuck in the mud for days on the road. Johnny, unfortunately, has no choice. He cannot cancel this contract, even if it means losing some money by driving without any passengers. The university pays him all year round to pick up students. After a few tense hours... I'm waiting for some, at least, some, some more, some more two, and then we move. One more two. Okay. Yeah, one more okay. two, and then we move. Yeah, because I can't just go empty, empty. With passengers helping to find more passengers, four extra people climb into the vehicle. For security reasons, Johnny sets off with a co-pilot. The road from Balama to Maropa is not very long, but this small 100-kilometre route is unsettling for all who dare take it. According to Johnny, the philosophical driver, there's no reason to be afraid. Not too long ago, these roads were occupied by infamous road bandits. When the police finally put a stop to these bandits' attacks, they changed their strategy. They are very cunning. Their villages are traps for travellers. Yeah, I know this, this place is shit, yeah? There doesn't seem to be anything suspicious about this track, but it is dangerous. 
His co-pilot thinks he has a better solution. Tem que ser, tem que preferir entrar aqui, porque ali o gajo vai bater coisa. Sim. Tem que entrar daqui, dali o gajo. Yeah, Até daqui. Só que ele tem que vir com velocidade. Não pode vir pouco a pouco. Nosso ele chuta, tá, 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 You know when, when there is a lot of water, yeah. you, 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 you won't get stuck. Yeah. 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 Driving without a shovel on this road is like throwing yourself to the wolves. These ruts are sabotaged by the villagers. Their rescuers turn out to be hustlers. They demand a small fortune. Johnny then tries a technique that normally works divide and conquer. This group is right to celebrate. They make three euros for each vehicle that gets stuck in the mud. Normally, these farmers don't even make a euro a day. In the city, the Mozambicans can expect to earn a little more. That is, if they're prepared to take some risks. In the middle of the country, at the edge of the River of Good Signs, lies the town of Quelemain. In these streets, it's not the car horn that dominates, but rather the bike bell. The town is home to 192,000 inhabitants and almost just as many bikes. The cars have to make their own way amidst the two-wheel traffic. A government official has to work for an average of 50 years before being able to afford a new car, and even then the litres of fuel are far too expensive. Because of this, bikes rule this town, even if it means transporting the most unlikely goods. Antonio is an ace. His balancing skills are matched only by his courage. He has to deliver 14 crates of beer to the other end of town. 168 bottles for one euro. He alone is in charge of the delivery. If he breaks anything, he has to pay. I'm 
For this delivery, the risk is not really worth the money. Three euros a day. Ten years ago, Antonio was a farmer, but after the death of his wife, he swapped his shovel for a pair of wheels. He thought he could get by a little better in the town, but here everything is more expensive. The bike does not belong to him. He rents it for one euro a day. At the back of his cabin, Antonio hides a small treasure. Okay. If he saves up the money he earns and does not break a single bottle, Antonio will have his bike finished in two years' time. Back with the lumberjacks, things are a little chaotic. Their truck is still stuck by the dried riverbed. Basunga's team has divided in two. There are some who've given up and are ready to set fire to the bush to satisfy their hunger. And there are some who've decided they're not returning home empty-handed. Liberation finally comes after hours of hard work. But it's all relative. It's almost dark and the lumberjacks have very little time to cut down 25 trees. Almost all of the chopped wood is sold abroad. This trade makes $540 million each year. The Mozambicans decide to cut the branch on which they are sat. No es peligroso, ¿cómo va a caer? caer el, ¿Cómo va a caer? ¿Cómo va a caer? Él está de ser aquí. These men are like machines. They push themselves to the maximum to cut down as much as possible. Ah, 
Today their efforts will not amount to much. The pay will be minimal. Basunga, the foreman, gives them the bad news. The road home will be just as difficult as the rest of the day. In two hours, Johnny, the minibus driver, has only managed to drive 30 kilometers. He's just reached Riteta, the village he's most worried about. This place is very complicated. The co-pilot tries to figure out the best route, but since their last breakdown in the mud, Johnny does not really trust his judgment. He decides to follow his instinct. Once again, the bus has fallen into a trap. The inhabitants hone in on their prey. They will have to negotiate again. And that's how you earn six euros without much effort. The money will be used to buy soap and basic necessities for the village. Johnny, go! Go! Go, Johnny, go! Echoes like a rock and roll song over this cursed track. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Muito obrigado. Yeah. Mas quando eu voltar, yeah. aí vocês vão jogar. Segura aí, mano. Mano. Yeah, because you know this place is a muddy place. So they they pass a lot of trucks here. The big truck mm. with the heavy. Go ahead. You see. Charge. Yeah. Okay. That's why you know the 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 place is like this. Okay. Because if it was a small car like this. And why so why they don't manage it, the people over there? They, they can't because if they manage it, they, 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 they won't get money. You see, now I want to pay them some money. The, the population, you know. Mm. Say that government, they have to, to do that, not us. Yeah. <laughs> Para aqui, não para longe. Para aqui, nós vamos ver terreno. A 38 ton vehicle is stuck in the middle of the road. These truck drivers are in no state to reach their destination. It could take weeks before a repairman comes to help them out. Johnny is going to try to bypass them. This is Marupa. Okay, a pesar de muita distância, acho que entramos bem. A estrada está mal. Seven hours of travel over a hundred kilometers, and the minibus comes out victorious. Johnny will take the same road back the next day, hoping that there will be no rain to slow his journey. For the team of lumberjacks, nightfall has complicated their situation. These forest thieves are worried that they will be caught by the police. The police normally do their rounds at the end of the day when the trucks are loaded with tree trunks. À sua volta, você para no sítio antes de chegar o controle, fala, você passa até ali, conversa com ele. E, o carro está a vir. Você saca alguma coisa, está a passar. Ok. Você é, para, é para proteger e não parar nada depois okay. do controle. Ok. Sem dinheiro, você não passa. Vamos, então. Oh. The lumberjacks still have to pass through the dried riverbed, the same one that they were trapped in just a few hours earlier. This time, Basunga tries to go through forcefully. Not a good idea. The men are exhausted. Hey, 
péssimo. Porque sofremos mal. É, o carro entra do, entrou do, do jeito que não é. É pá, sofremos mal. A lot of effort for a meager three euros each. Their only consolation tonight is that they will not run into the police. Two hundred kilometers away, near the island of Mozambique, is a large stretch of land. It's three kilometers long and 350 meters wide. The Portuguese made it their capital. During the five centuries of colonization, the natives were forbidden from entering the town. When Mozambique acquired its independence in 1975, approximately 300 families moved to the island, especially fishermen. Fish is the main source of income on the island. Sidi in red and his brother Apagar are some of the poorest fishermen on the island. They've been saving for many months to buy themselves a gadget that will change their lives. Esse tal senhor mestre. Sim. Parte dele. Due to the lack of resources, you have to be creative. Getsinho is skilled in the art of making diving masks. Mais vidros. Sim. Mais corte. Sim. Getsinho sells his masks for 10 euros each. They are not free. Little by little, the mask begins to take shape. And an hour later, there is a demonstration. With this mask, Apagar has no doubt that fishing will be much easier. On the boats, men are also superior to machines. Their muscles are pushed to the maximum, but this morning, the current stops them from moving forward. In Sidi and Apagar's boat, the crew is extremely versatile. Eleven-year-old kids work with fishermen that could be their grandparents. Even though they work themselves to the bone, their hunt for fish is not equal to that of the other fishermen on the island. Before throwing the net into the water, the team must pick up speed, otherwise the net will not extend properly.
500 meters of netting is spread out into the sea. It takes two men to complete the manoeuvre 10 metres below the water. On the boat, the fishermen use all of their strength to pull the net up. They try to close the trap as quickly as possible. 11-year-old Bakaito struggles to keep up with their rhythm. He hinders the manoeuvre. Apagar is exhausted, but he dives again. He tries to keep the fish at the bottom of the net. Lots of effort for almost nothing. Fish are becoming scarcer, but Sidi still has hope for the future. Their dinner will be small as the fish are not very big. Overfishing has caused significant damage. The fish no longer have enough time to reproduce. In order for the numbers to increase, the fishermen from the island of Mozambique would have to stop fishing for at least five years. Back in the minibus, Johnny is driving back in the opposite direction with four students. The university paid triple to reserve his bush taxi. This time, the sun is out. It seems as though nothing can spoil this day. Except perhaps his co-pilot's last crazy idea. <laughs> However, it is hot, extremely hot. After half an hour on the road, the odour is unbearable.
Johnny asks him to put his calf's head in the cooler, but there's a small problem. It won't fit. Shit. Johnny! <laughs> As they cover more and more ground, tension builds in the minibus. Johnny is nearing the villages that are full of traps set by the inhabitants, holes filled cunningly with water so that the vehicles get stuck in them. But this time, Johnny has no intention of getting his wallet out. The minibus gets through without any trouble. Johnny savors his revenge. <laughs> They don't gonna take your money, so you happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 